I finally completed my custom eGPU enclosure. That's right, if you didn't know what's going on already, then I've been doing a series of videos of my like eGPU journey with basically getting the best hybrid setup out of my Asus ROG Ally X, turning it into the best kind of like docked performance on my TV. So make sure you go and watch the other videos and subscribe. But the last video was a bit of a like, I don't know if this is gonna work because I basically was building my own eGPU, which usually is what I dubbed the dead Robocop build, where it's just splayed out and cables and mess everywhere. I didn't want that, I wanted it enclosed. So basically I just blindly bought stuff off Amazon. <laughs> Uh, with the idea of slamming it together and hoping that it worked out. Yeah, I made it work, but not exactly how I anticipated. And I've also added a few things as well. Now, in the last video, I said I didn't want to be doing any fabricating, any 3D printing. I just wanted to buy stuff and slam it together. And I was unsure if I'd need to be drilling extra holes or anything like that. And I, it's safe to say, I have not done any of that. Yes, I have bought extra parts and changed some other bits and stuff, but I haven't actually had to drill anything. I've had to repurpose things, but I haven't actually had to drill anything or actually change anything. This is pretty simple. If you've built a PC before, then you're gonna be able to do this. It's a little bit of a faff, I must admit, especially because I was figuring it out, but maybe when I show you what I've done, it'll make it easier for you. I don't know. So I wanna show you this. This is the case, the mini geek. All of the links will be down in the description. So opening the side panel up here, this is the, the bread and butter, right? The actual meat and potatoes of the build. We've got the Corsair RM750E power supply here. This is a full ATX size power supply, PSU. It does come with an ATX bracket, but you can get an SFX bracket if you want, which is smaller and give you a bit more room because I definitely struggled for room in this, even though it's a pretty sort of like open empty case. It is actually like a micro ATX case for like super small builds, but I've just repurposed it, right? We've then at the back on the bottom just there, we've got our ADT Link UT3G, which is the, basically the actual eGPU, you know, like the, the PCIe controller there. We then have my RTX 4070. Then at the top, I've got a 120 by 15 fan. So super low profile. I've got one there, one at the back. So these are both exhausting, right? Because my GPU at the bottom is actually pulling air in from the base. However, it's so close to the bottom and you can see it's at an angle. I will discuss that in a minute, but don't worry. <laughs> but because it's so close to the bottom, I've added a fan as well. You can see the fans already for the, the GPU underneath. And I was a little bit skeptical because the feet that come with this thing are really, really short, giving hardly any clearance. Like if I had this fan attached, the feet are actually shorter than the fan. So it would have just been sat on this fan, right? So I wasn't happy about the, the, the small amount of clearance there and airflow that it would get. So I actually bought extra feet which was just on Amazon. And then I just screwed them in with some screws I had left over from the fans, I think. All the parts that I used here were like kind of from what I bought. I didn't actually have to buy any extra screws or whatever. I just repurposed stuff that came with all this. But yeah, so I've extended the feet out, which then gave me enough clearance to add this fan on the bottom to then push it in, which is then gonna get pulled in by the GPU and then sucked out and exhaust from the top and the back just here. I really wanted to put two fans in on the bottom inside here. However, the way that the graphics card sits, it just was not possible. It just did, it wasn't possible. And especially because the power supply here is modular, all my cables are in there. So it is super tight from the cables that are coming out here and touching the top of the graphics card, which I've then routed around the back, which I'll show you in a moment. I've had to take out all of the like in and outs of these because obviously they wouldn't work anyway. The whole case dismantles, like you can pull this case completely apart. So I pretty much had to do that to get this in, which was one of the biggest faffs. So this is the back of the build, the mess. I've tried to cable manage this as best as I can. And when you're looking from the front, it looks fine. I think it's fairly tidy from the back, you know? I've got all my fan cables here. So that, that fan on the bottom just there is actually coming through the back edge of the like the slots here, which you would normally have your graphics card butted up to, but we couldn't do that. Again, I'll explain what I've had to do with the UT3G in a second, but this fan comes up and through this grill and then tucks around the back just here 
all the way around and then inside here. So to connect the fans, I've got molar two fan connectors, right? So I've got some molar adapters that literally just plug the fans directly into the power supply so that those fans are running at full speed at all times. Now they're about 1500 RPM and they're not overly loud. And to be fair, I've got this plugged into a 77 inch OLED TV with a massive soundbar always got the sound up, so I never hear it anyway. It is audible, so it is fairly loud, but it's not like horrendous and you cannot hear it over the TV either. Obviously I've had to pull those cables back from the power supply and up here. There's only two cables that you need to install. It's the 24 pin into the UT3G, which is this one just here. And then the other one is actually for the graphics card. That's it, that's why I went modular because I only wanted those two cables, but then obviously I've used molar as well. So I've had to plug that in and then connect these fans up here. Now, whilst we're on the back, this is probably the easiest way to show you how I've mounted the UT3G because I was like, oh no, how am I gonna do this? The UT3G comes with like a, a plate on the back, just like a plastic plate to protect it with some rubber like standoff, some little feet just so that you can have that literally on your desk just as is, but obviously I didn't want to do that. So originally I took that back plate off thinking I could mount it where like the motherboard, like standoff holes would be in the back of this case. No, because the UT3G is massive. As you can see, it stops here, starts right over here in the corner and goes all the way across. So that wasn't going to happen and the holes didn't line up anyway. And that is why my GPU cannot actually fit here, right? So if I spin it over, the GPU cannot sit flush on the back because of the UT3G board. It's actually, it overextends the sort of corner there where the graphics card slots into. So I couldn't even slot the graphics card in here if I wanted to, because I would have had actually physically had to have sawn the board off and there was clearly like a circuit in that bit of the board. So I was like, I'm not doing that because I will break it. So what I did instead, after a lot of head scratching was actually found a hole from the side just here that fit one of the feet holes. So I've put the board back on that, that kind of like shield on the back there just to protect the components. I don't want to shorten out or anything if this metal case touches the back, right? So I found a hole that actually fit. I've then kept the rubber foot on and then mounted it through that. So I've actually like pushed it through the board and everything, screwed it on with a bolt. So on the other side, there's a bolt. This was why it was very, very fiddly because I had to put the thing through, bolt it, because I had to make sure that there was enough clearance for the graphics card. So when the graphics card is actually slotted in, I'm not gonna puncture it or like short it out by having this bolt like stuck through it. But yeah, that didn't happen. So I got that side in and then this piece, this, this metal piece here, this like, rectangle piece was actually up here for cable management and whatever else maybe for if you've actually got a motherboard on there. So what I did was I just unscrewed it from here, screwed it in the corner here and then angled it to fit one of the other feet holes, right? So that this is actually sat and how it's connected to the board on the bottom of the UT3G. There's a rubber standoff just there. So I've got it screwed in there and I've got it screwed in there with this like hijacked janky setup that actually like moves. And that is why the UT3G is at a slight angle because those holes aren't like properly aligned. It is very slightly at an angle, but the whole thing is like that and it is fine. I've checked the stress on it and it's fine. And if anything, it's actually helping because of those cables that are pushing down from the power supply. So it's like kind of at, a slight angle, giving it a bit of relief from those power supply cables, you know? So I saw this as a kind of a good thing. <laughs> Obviously routing these cables was the, the biggest thing because I wanted it to look neat. If you don't care, it doesn't matter. You don't have a CPU in there. You don't have a CPU cooler in there or a motherboard or anything because that's where the motherboard would sit, right at the bottom at the back just there, right? So you've got all this empty space that's not doing anything. So you could totally just dump your cables in there that wouldn't be too much of a problem. It might impede the airflow a bit, but again, like it's not that big of a problem. The graphics card is secured to the UT3G and then the cable around here comes around to power the graphics card. And because it's cocked at a slight angle, just there down, it's giving it more relief from these cables coming out of the power supply, right? Now you can see two cables hanging out of the back just here. Now this one you can see coming out here and going up, 
is the Thunderbolt cable or the USB 4 cable coming out of the UT3G, which is going to plug into your Ally X and give it the power of your graphics card, right? But the other one, and this is what I wanted to do, which was different, I wanted to make sure I had extra in and out. So what I've done is I've stuck a dock inside that you've probably seen already. But the dock I originally wanted to use was too big. It wouldn't fit behind this 24 pin cable and that Thunderbolt cable just there which is what I originally intended to do. So instead, I came up with something else and that is using a different dock. So if we pull it round, ta-da, there we go. That is another JSOX dock, one that I'd reviewed previously. And I was like, you know what? It's, it's perfect because it's, it's really compact. Like it's very compact. It doesn't need the stand on it because it just comes off, right? So it's just a brick. And what I've done is I've mounted it to this side panel, right? So if I flip this over, very carefully, this piece here, I've literally glued it on there with some Gorilla mounting tape, right? So it's just a whole strip of mounting tape just along there, and then I've got this dog, and then just wedged it on there and held it there until it sticks, and then it like goes off and it will stay on there, right? Now I've got a USB-C, I've got two USB-A's, I've got a gigabit ethernet port, I've got HDMI out if I wanted to use the APU side on like a different monitor or something, and then I've got power delivery in at 100 watts. Now that is going to actually give my Ally X enough power to get like turbo mode whilst it thinks it's docked, because it will, because it's got this plugged into it, right? And it will make sure that I've got enough IO there. This is actually the cable that comes from this dock. Now the, this cable is not removable, so I had to come up with a plan because that's not long enough to plug in whilst it's on the side. So I got a cable matters USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 or whatever extension lead, which is a, a USB-C to C extension, so female to male extension, so that now I've got, you know, ample room here to connect into my second Ally X USB port to give power and extra IO. And then I've got this cable as well coming out of the back at the top just here, which is giving my eGPU to the Ally X. So I've got two cables that hang out the back that are roughly around the same length, right? And there's good enough length there for me to plug it in. But you may have seen this and thinking, well, what's, what's that doing? Where's that go? <laughs> well, I had an issue where these are on the back, obviously, right? So I was plugging in my tiny little keyboard thing. I've got like a little tiny cheap keyboard, like reminds me of like a Blackberry or something. <laughs> and it's got like a touchpad and a keyboard and it uses a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. But plugging it into the back, there was some sort of interference there and it just was not working correctly. It was really delayed and I had to hold it at an angle to get the signal to work. So plugging it in caused problems. So what I did was I thought, well, I'll just get a USB-A to USB-A extender and route it inside. So what I've actually done is that cable that's plugged into the back of the dock there comes up into the top here and it actually sits above in this slot above the power supply pointing out of the front. So right at the front of the grill, right? I'm trying to pick this up without destroying my graphics card. Up here somewhere is the, the 2.4 gigahertz dongle hidden pointing out of the front so that I get the best connection. It's like directional, right? It needs line of sight. And this is all perforated mesh on the side here and it works, it works. So that solved my problem there. And luck would have it is that the slots just here still align with my graphics card like IO. So you've got the HDMI and display ports just there which roughly align. So I've had to take these out obviously because of these cables, but you can just get a HDMI lead or a display port lead and just put it straight in. Even display port's fine because it clicks in, but you can get your thumb under there to like pinch it to pull it out. You know, the ones with the lock on or just buy one without a lock because you can get those. The other thing I forgot to mention is this case has its own like pass through port for the power supply just here. So there's a cable that runs through the top and then it plugs directly into the power supply because the power supply is like held upright at an angle, right? You've got to make sure that you turn the power supply on first before you mount it because there's no way you're going to get your fingers in there. It is so small. And then one of my favorite things is the fact that this has a handle on it. So it makes it a portable setup. And that's kind of what I wanted. Not that I'm actually going to 
bother like going places, but coming here to the studio or playing in my living room, yeah, I'm gonna do that. And it's just so easy for me to just unplug a couple of cables, pick it up and then go. So all I've got to do is plug my power supply cable into the wall, you know, the kettle lead, plug my 100 watt power supply into that dock on the back. And then it's just those two cables, the UT3G, the eGPU side of it into the the USB 4 port on the Ally X, and then the other cable into the other port on the Ally X, which is gonna provide power and in and out. And it's been fantastic. I've been having such a good time. The footage you've been seeing of Spider-Man is actually up here in the studio on my like lesser TV, right? It's only maximum 60 Hertz, but on my 77 inch OLED 120 Hertz monitor downstairs, monitor TV, whatever, you know, it has been phenomenal. That 4070 gets so, so good performance. It really does, because you still get a bottleneck there it's still like a drop in performance uh like versus running the card directly attached to a motherboard like in a pcie slot because we're running over a usb 4 cable there is a knock in performance but the ut3g that performance drop is very very slim and it's totally viable you know playing spider-man here 4k yeah okay i'm using dlss upscaling but it's 4K still with no ray tracing on and getting between 85 and 120 FPS is ridiculous. It must be more because I'm actually limited in the NVIDIA control panel, limited my FPS to 117 just so it doesn't go outside of my screens like refresh rate. Now I did tinker around with like frame generation and all that good stuff as well. And that's great, but I really noticed the artifacts visually, especially on a 77 inch <laughs> TV, right? So I've not been bothering with frame gen and I've just kind of been using upscaling. So just straight up DLSS and then just keeping it with that. And the performance has been so, so good. You know, Star Wars Outlaws was ridiculous, but that game's broken currently with 24H2 or whatever, you know, the Windows update, which is really frustrating. But yeah, Ghost of Tsushima has been running fantastically. I've been playing loads of the Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is what this is. But yeah, ultimately, this is a fantastic setup. I'm really happy with how this build came out. All of the stuff you can find on Amazon, it is fairly easy to do. I'm sorry I didn't show you a step-by-step -step guide. That would have been very, very long. It took me hours to do this because I had to try and figure out how I'm gonna mount it. It is possible. If you've got some like PC savviness here, then you can totally build this yourself without going down the 3D printed route or like completely fabricating something yourself. You can literally just buy stuff off Amazon and make it work like I have. And if anything, I think I've made it better because I've added that dock, I've added th those extra fans as well. Like, it's just such a good setup and it's portable. But anyway, that's enough rambling from me. My next video will probably be testing the UT3G, right? So testing this eGPU setup, I will run some tests, get some benchmarks and just show you some averages of FPS, stuff you can expect to see performance-wise. But yeah, my 4070 that I'm using here is doing really, really well and I'm having an absolute blast. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're gonna try and attempt this yourself, let me know down in the comments and obviously all the parts and stuff will be down in the description as well. Hopefully you've found this useful. I don't know, just tell me things in the comments. Anyway, like this video, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Become a member and you can talk to me and AJ over on our private Discord. And talking of AJ, we've got our podcast over here. Check out another video from me down here. Bye.